So you've looked at ratios, and you've looked at rates, and now finally we're going to look at proportion. And what a proportion is are simply two ratios or rates that are equal. So I'll give you an example of a ratio. Maybe we have a ratio, ratio that's 3 to 5. Well, a proportion, so one that's equal to that, might be 6 to 10. So this is a proportion. If there's three, let's go to the marble thing. Say there's three blue marbles and five to five red marbles. Well, that's in proportion to there being six blue marbles to ten red marbles. These are the same. The same ratios. This one here is just twice as big as this one. So that makes these a proportion. An example of a rate Let's say you're making $9 per one hour. That's equal to, or in proportion to, making $18 for two hours. Or, if you like, $36 for four hours. These are all the same things. So that's what a proportion is. When you have two ratios that are the same, or you have some rates, two rates that are the same. That makes a proportion. So here's how we might use a proportion. Say we know that six pencils cost $2. How much do 24 pencils cost? So usually what we do with this is we, we set this up like so. So $2 for six pencils. And I know that that's got to be proportional or equal to a certain amount of money. We'll call that X. I don't know what that is for 24 pencils. So if I got to figure out what that number is there, $2 for every 6 equals a certain amount of money for every 24. I just got to ask myself, what do I have to multiply 6 by to get 24? Well, I have to multiply it by 4. So 6 times 4 is 24. So to figure how, mu how much 24 pencils cost, I'm just going to multiply the numerator also by 4. So 2 times 4 is 8. So this number here should be $8. So how much do 24 pencils cost? $8. So when we're working with proportions, we'll take the ratio or we'll take the rate and we'll set it up as a fraction and we'll make it equivalent to or equal to another fraction with a different denominator. And we'll find out what we have to multiply or divide one side to get to the other side and make sure we do the same to the numerator. Let's look at another example. Say you got paid $24 for three hours of work. How much would you get paid for five hours of work? So $24 for three hours of work. How much would you get paid for five hours of work. So we got to figure out what goes here. Well, there's a couple ways you could do this. We could ask ourselves, what do we have to multiply three by to get five? Now you might not be able to do that in your head, but if you went to a calculator and went five divided by three, that would tell you that you need to multiply three by 1.666 repeating so 1.666, or we can put a bar on, on the 6, 1.6 repeating. If I take 3 and multiply it by 1.666, I'll get 5. So I have to take the $24 and multiply it by 1.6 repeating to figure out how much I would get paid for 5 hours of work. I'll just write a bunch of 6's there. So I get paid 39.99. I would basically get paid $40.00. if I worked for five hours. So how much would I get paid for five hours of work? I would get paid $40. Now there's another way we can do this. We could, we could take the $24 for three hours and figure out first, so write it as a unit rate, figure out how much it is for one hour. So I'd have to divide that by three. So then I would divide this by three. 24 divided by 3 is 8. So what I know now is I'm actually getting paid $8 per one hour. 
So the question was, how much would I get paid for five hours of work? So if I know this is one, I have to multiply this by five to get five. And I have to multiply then this by five, eight times five is 40. So another way you can do it is you can take the, the rate that you were given and you could convert it to a unit rate. And then we can go from our unit rate to whatever they're asking us in the question. So that's one way to do that. I could do this question without a calculator this way. Doing it this way here, um, I would have probably need to use a calculator to figure out what I need to multiply 3 by to get 5, because that's not as obvious. And then I would need to take that same thing and multiply that number by 24 to get $40. Let's look at a ratio question. So the ratio of boys to girls in a classroom is 2 to 3. If there are 15 girls in the classroom, how many boys are there? So I'm going to write down my ratio, 2 to 3. It's not a bad idea to just put up the top that the left side is boys and the right side is girls, so you don't get confused. So boys to girls, 2 to 3. I know now that there are actually 15 girls in the classroom. So the right side has, is now 15. But it's basically the same thing. What do we have to multiply 3 by to get 15? I have to multiply that by 5. 3 times 5 is 15. So I'll multiply this side of the ratio by 5. 2 times 5 is 10. So if there are 15 girls in the classroom, there would be 10 boys in the classroom. So that's how we can use proportions to solve it with, where, with when we're given a ratio. It's basically the same thing as when we're given a rate. And in our final example, we'll look at, at this question. So we're get, we know that a two kilogram bag of flour costs $5.75. How many kilograms would you expect to get then if you had $12 worth of money? So that's $5.75 for two kilograms and we need to figure out how much would we get for twelve dollars so this is the part that we don't know down here so I'm gonna to try to figure out what do I have to multiply this by 5.75 by to get to 12 so I'm gonna to go to the calculator I don't know what that is but if I go 12 divided by 5.75 then that's going to tell me what that number must be. So it's about 2.09. I'm just going to round it to two decimal places. 2.09. So if I multiply, if I multiply 5.75 by 2.09, it's going to give me $12. So I need to multiply 2 by 2.09. And I'm not going to clear this all out. I'm just going to go hit the times button, and it'll take that answer, 2.09. And I want to multiply that by 2, so 2.09 times 2. And I would get 4.17. So I would expect to get, for $12, 4.17 kilograms of flour because this, uh, this rate here is in proportion to the rate that we were given. So that's how we can use proportion to solve problems.